Well guys, it's like 20 degrees outside and snowing in South Alabama. So, I'm kind of trapped. Oh, well, I guess I'm, I, I could go out and do try to do something, but the only thing that's really in season is squirrel right now. And they don't like moving when it's this cold, especially that it's, you know, it's not sunny. I could go fishing, but I think all the fish are dead because it's too cold. They might be like so cold that they're just blocks of ice just floating down somewhere in the water. Doubt I could catch anything. I'm not even that good when it's warm, so when it's like unseasonably extremely cold, I don't know if I could do anything. So I decided to film something a little bit different. I know you guys are getting uh, getting ready for fishing season, getting ready to, for, I mean, that shouldn't be too much longer. I know it's crazy because it's snowing outside in Alabama, but it shouldn't be too much longer before those fish start getting up on their beds or they start cruising looking for beds or whatever. So pre-spawn's coming up soon. These fish are fattening up and we're getting ready to start cranking them. But I've got a little uh, cabin fever, fever today and I'm really getting looking forward for I've got a little bit of cabin fever, cabin fever, and I'm really looking forward to get out and do some fishing soon. So I decided to film a little bit of a real, real review. I can't talk today, my God. I decided to film a little bit of a real review. All right guys, so the reel we're gonna be looking at today is the Shimano Xsense DC. It's this very sweet little reel. I've used this thing a ton. If you've been watching for a while, um, last summer, this was like pretty much my go-to reel. This is a 2012 model. When I got it back probably about a year ago, a little bit less than a year ago, these were on eBay pretty regular for about 180, I wanna say, to 200. Right now, they're, the price has gone up a little bit. They're becoming a little bit harder to find, but they're still like right around 200, a little over 200 bucks. So, for a DC reel, that's, pretty dang good, especially a Japanese DC reel. Now it is, at this point, that'd be, uh, what, nine years old, but I think it's still a very relevant reel, and we're gonna tell you guys why. So to start off, I wanna just go a little bit into like the detail, like the history of the reel, and some of the, um, some of the specs. All right, so like I just mentioned, uh, when I got it, the retail was right, like a little bit below 200. Right now it's like right around 200. Now the Shimano, uh, the Corrado DC that's available in America. Right now it's retailing for 250 and in my opinion, this is a little bit of a beef up, or not really in my opinion, just based on why this reel was designed and what little bit I know about it. Uh, this reel is basically a beefed up Corrado in the most basic sense. The reel was designed to target sea bass in Japan, like inshore kind of stuff. So long casts, braid, uh, hard fighting saltwater fish and that means it's saltwater ready too so it's got like a it's got like an updated um, gear system or it's the egg ship gears I think it's one of the only old style uh, like old generation Shimano's that actually has egg ship gears you can probably see the little insignia thing so it's got the egg ship gears which are pretty great as you know they're very common on, on Corrado's and normal uh, Shimano that, reel that you buy. It's an all aluminum frame, nine plus one bearings, eight to one gear ratio. So it's pretty fast, but it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's easy to reel a fast. It's easy to, easier to slow reel a fast reel than to fast reel a slow reel, if that makes sense. It's based on the old Cronart D frame. I think, if I remember correctly, this came out the year after the Cronarts were discontinued, at least in the US. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if they were discontinued in Japan at that time, based off the Cronart. There's a huge following, and I think Core 100, I wanna say. So there's a huge following for those reels, and if you want like basically an updated version of those, I mean, this is a, a good option. What's really cool about it is it has a clicking drag. So, you know, like with a spinning reel, when a fish starts running and you got the drag, you know, tighten down and it's a big fish, it goes bzzz, this thing kind of does the same thing. I've got some experience with that, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The DC system, let me see, it's actually really easy to open this thing. So right here, there's like a little, little knob thing. You just flick that open and the side comes right off. 
And that right there is the little DC module somewhere in there. I'm not exactly sure how all that works. And those are on this side. It's all your settings. So the DC system is, I want to say, I'm not 100% sure, but I did a little bit of research. It's a proprietary DC to this reel. It's the IDC Plus braking system. Hopefully you could hear that a little bit. It's a little bit quieter than a, than a, a Corrado DC, which most people don't like that. I mean, I just like the sound. Whether it's you can barely hear it or it's pretty loud, I, I like the sound. I think most people, most bass fishermen can agree that that sound is just something else. And as I mentioned, salt water ready. Some, the bearings are treated with like a anti-corrosion something or other, coating or whatever. Uh, it's got, as I mentioned, X-ship gears. I'm pretty sure they're made out of brass or something along those lines. So that's enough for the, of the specs. Let's get into like why I really like it. Oh, and well, b before we get into that, I want to kind of compare this as far as like size goes in case some of you guys aren't familiar with like a Cronart D or whatever, which I'm not that familiar with them. But so this, I don't have my, any of my Corrados here, but this is a uh, Shimano Scorpion 200 and it's basically just a red Corrado. Um, this is a little bit, a little bit more solid than a Corrado in my opinion, but this is a Shimano Scorpion and they're about the same size. The X sense is a little bit beefier. The gear system, the gearing uh, box, I guess, little area that holds the gears is a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier. And then the cover with the DC side is a little bit bigger. Overall, the reel is a little bit longer as well, but it's still a really low profile reel as it's designed to be. So that's like a decent size comparison and like looks comparison. Also, because it's a DC, and I'm assuming also might be because of the beefed up like gears and bearings and stuff. It's a little bit heavier, but it's not that big of a deal to me. I mean, I, I'm fine with a few more ounces just to hear that. You may be already, you may already notice that it's a little bit quieter than a Corrado just from that, but it still gets the job done. What I like about it is just plain and simple. It is super durable. It is solid as it can be. It's probably the most durable reel that I know of because I it, you can I've I've beat this thing up last year as you guys saw if you've been watching. So and the DC like it works as it as it should. Um, if you set it right and you do your part, that DC is going to do its part. You're very rare to get a backlash. I actually got a backlash the other day, but I on my, when I was swinging it around, I was using a lipless crank and them trebles just grabbed a like a huge wad of of weeds on the bank and that was no fun but super durable easy to easy to cast it casts pretty far it's a I'd say it's probably about the same as a as a Corrado DC also I forgot to mention about the, like the price range or whatever I think it's I think the the SLX DC is around 189 or 190 200 so this is about the same price range as an SLX DC but in my opinion you get a lot more real in this it feels really nice in hand, like it just, it feels like a solid reel just handling it. Uh, I noticed on my Corrado, the, from the, the basic Corrado, I used it a, a lot last summer, and at the end of the year, as most reels do, it had like just a little bit of looseness in it, if you know what I mean. It's nothing bad about it, it's just like the gears, you can kind of hear the gears when you're reeling it and stuff, after using it a bunch. This one, it's, a nine-year-old reel. I've used it as much or more as a Corrado, and you, I mean, it's still just as smooth and as silent as possible. So I think it's a little bit, a little bit more durable than a Corrado. But it's not saying a Corrado is bad. I mean, I love my Corrado. A, a couple of things I've used this thing for is obviously bass. I've caught quite a few bass on this reel. It handles them like it's nothing. This is like, if you remember, there's a video that it didn't get the, the views that it should have in my opinion, but I caught a 28 and a half pound long nose gar. It was, I want to say like 58 inches or something. It was like a five foot long fish, weighed almost 30 pounds, and I caught it on this reel. Well, I, I mean, I caught it on a rod too, but <laughs> I caught it on this reel, and I'm going to roll some clips from that.
This is a good one. He's pulling drag. Yeah, he's right here. Grab that rag. Grab that rag. I'm glad I backed the drag off on this a little bit. Like that last one, we couldn't get it up. Back up this might be the biggest gore I've ever caught on rod and reel. <laughs> oh my god. You might want to give him more drag. I want to get in that kayak. <laughs> no, we better land him. Hey, but I can't see him. <laughs> Holy crap. His runs are shorter than it. Oh my god. That's a, that, that's a toad. Gained a little bit on him. Nope. Horse too much. I'm not. Holy crap. Oh my god. That thing is massive. Oh my god. Easy, man. Easy. No, no, tighten it up. No, I'm backing it out. You got him? Got him. Oh my god. Oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> oh my god. Five boy. Oh. Dude. Dude, thanks, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. I knew he was big. I did not think he was that big. I'm six foot. <laughs> so Court is six foot tall. That thing's tail touching the ground. That thing's almost five feet. So as you can see, this reel handled that thing like a dream. Like this thing, I horsed it a little bit. I uh, The drag worked flawlessly. It just, it did everything perfect. It, did, it exceeded my expectations for this type of, this class reel for that big of a fish. I also uh, fished for snapper with it a little bit. I don't think it ever made it into a video, but I did manage to catch a mangrove snapper on this reel. Handled it like a dream. I tried to catch some uh, some Spanish mackerel, but that didn't work out. I, I can't say enough about like the the just the strength and the the durability of this reel and how like how well it does against stuff that you wouldn't expect a regular bass fishing bait caster to do. And in my opinion, this is like. If you if you watch like John B and stuff, he uh, he loves these Japanese reels, as do most fishermen. But he's got that Antares, I think it's the MDXGDC something or other. A lot of numbers. The Monster Drive Antares. It's made for like big fish. I think it was. I think he said it was designed for like, it was like specifically designed to target like thirty pound peacocks in the Amazon. And he's out there flipping for two pound bass with it. But that this is basically like the budget version of that reel. Now there's two new uh, generations of this reel. I think there was a new new generation in 2017 and then there was a new one last year. I really want to get that reel but it's like 300 bucks and I can't swing that right now. So I'm not really good at doing these type of like reviews or whatever but I figured I, could, I would share you with you guys like what I like it, about this reel and give some more exposure to a, a, a reel that not many people really know about. Like this is a, in my opinion, probably the best DC reel you can get for the money. It's more solid than a Corrado DC. It's beefed up, saltwater ready, and I've used it in saltwater quite a bit and it's still smooth as, a, as butter. And I, I mean, I fought big fish on it. So if you guys, uh, if you guys want to pick one of these up, I'm going to try to like link something in the description, like an eBay link to it or something. One little pro tip for shopping on eBay, especially when you're buying something expensive overseas, is look for the seller's rating. If it's like, I've only bought from customers that have, or from uh, sellers that have like a 90 something, 99 point something percent rating. In my opinion, based on the way eBay is, I think even like a 97% is a little bit sketchy, but that's just me. I'm a little bit too cautious with all that stuff, but luckily most of the Japanese uh, JDM dealers, sellers on eBay, they uh, they have pretty good reviews. So there's not too much, and PayPal, like PayPal and eBay, they have like the insurance or whatever, where if, if your package doesn't come in 
and you show some sort of proof that the package never came in, you get your money back. You can file a dispute and get your money back. So I feel like it's it's a lot safer than a lot of people make it out to be. I've never had an issue. I bought three reels, I think, two or three reels from uh, from Japan on eBay, and all of them they've all come in. If you guys enjoyed this, if you want to see more, if you want to see a review on this uh, Shimano Scorpion, then please let me know. Drop a comment on what I, what you think I missed. Any other questions you have about this reel or if you know any of my other reels, if you have any questions about them, uh, drop it in the comments below. And hopefully before too much longer, we can start ripping some lips. Always remember to live like 25 high. We'll see you next time.